rising, rising. Born to shine. Born to shine. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Welcome, guys, to another amazing episode of Bar TV, brilliant and resilient television where, I don't know, I think we're making our imprint in the atmosphere of having icons because I am definitely sitting next to an icon here. If you don't know, if you don't recognize, which I'm sure you do, but we have Proz. Proz Michelle, and he's definitely a brilliant and resilient artist. Um, just overall person and individual and I want to thank you for giving us this exclusive today thanks for having me yes definitely welcome um, where can I start <sighs> before the Fuji's um, I mean I was born in Brooklyn my yeah. parents um, from Haiti um, and then we moved to Jersey grew up in Jersey uh, it's where I met Lauren Hill, um, Wyclef John. You know, we were in the church together, and then I started this band called the Fuji's, and we were just some kids in, in in Jersey back in those days when hip hop was very vibrant. You know, how old were you exactly? Uh, when I started the Fuji's, I was 13 years old. Brilliant and resilient. 13, because my daughter's 14. She's just finished her ninth grade. So 13 years old. Wow. Yeah. But you got to remember, I come from an era like, where hip hop was just kind of like just getting this ground, you know. Um, uh, and, I, you know, people don't, for those who understand hip hop back when, it kind of like the birth of it, because I grew up in like in the beginning of hip hop, it's similar to like, um, 12, 15 years ago when someone could say, I remember when Apple phone first came out, right? right? So it's kind of like the same thing with hip hop. And anyway, I was inspired, man. There was a lot of great artists coming up at that time. You know, I came up from the era of Snoop, Ice Cube, Tupac, Wu-Tang Clan, Nas, Icons. Icons. you know, oh. um, Biggie Smalls. So when we started a group, we wanted to be a part of that. Right. You know, we wanted to add our stamp, flavor. our flavor, imprint. you know, and our imprint. And and, and, and we, 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 I think we touched on something. We, we, we delivered think. something. <laughs> you think? We're in 2019. Yeah, well, you know, we're blessed, you know. I, I was blessed to have two incredible artists alongside with me. And we just were creating great music at that time. Yeah. And so, you know, so then that led to, obviously, we sold over 20 million records and each individual went and did their own thing. And obviously, I went to do my own thing. And I just wanted to just always keep exploring, evolving. yeah, evolving, right? Right. So when you went off to do your own thing, what did that consist of? Touch on a few of the projects you have. I mean, you know, I, I, so after I did um, Ghetto Superstar, I, I moved, love that one. Oh, thank you. I moved out to L.A. just to explore Hollywood. Um, I started to do a couple movies. And then I realized, you know, I love filmmaking. I love movies, but I didn't really want to be an actor. You know, that wasn't my calling. Mm -hmm. uh, I love more of the producing, the creative side of it, but I didn't want to be an actor. And then, um, but I ventured into that. And then, obviously, I started to really get involved in um, Haitian politics, okay. try to help out my country. Okay. Um, because you know, once you, once you have a certain level of success, you use that platform to try to do better, better and, and, and trying to make a difference and help people, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was natural for me to go and try to help people in Haiti because I grew up in an era where it's not like today, it wasn't cool to be Haitian, right? Mm. So, you know, I was proud of the fact that we, the Fuji's were the one that kind of like put Haitians on the map, right? Mm -hmm. And so 
I wanted to kind of lend my voice and kind of like go back to Haiti and see what I can do, you know, from a bird's eye point of view. Okay. Yeah. So I started to dip and dab into that. I've always had this fascination for politics, not just local politics, but international politics. And then I met this guy actually, um, maybe 03, 04, some friend of mine introduced me to this guy. and. It was interesting because she was white, this this white girl. And she's real cool. And she was like, I'm telling you, you got to meet this guy. He's going to be the first black president. Mm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, this is in 304, right? Oh, wow. And so um, then I met him. Um, that's obviously President Barack Obama. And um, he had this thing about him that I thought was great. Okay. This, this thing that like... You saw his calling, pretty much. <laughs> it's not even that, you know. I'm one of those people I never, nothing can go past me. Like, I believe anything and everything is possible. Right. So to say the first black president, I wasn't one of those people like, yeah, right. That's not happening, yeah. No. But what I saw in him was, he's actually was a good man, you mm -hmm. know. So I think he was a good man before he was a politician. Because you have people who are more like they're politician and then they have some good in them, right? right? He's innately a good person who just happened to go into the political field, right. right? And sometimes some might say that's not a good mixture because politics is politics. It has no friends. It has, it's just what it is, you know? That's what it's supposed to be, right? right? So when you met him, how long before he actually became president? 08 is when he became president. But, but you met him in 04, right? 04, yeah. And then four years later. So w would you say you were a supporter of his campaign? I was a supporter of him. And obviously I joined the campaign when he announced the first time. Just the excitement of, you know, um, being a surrogate, a celebrity surrogate, just putting the word out there, trying to kind of like galvanize people. Yeah, right, galvanize people to go in, vote for him, you know. Because, you know, we have a big voting problem here in the U.S., okay. um, understandably so. Yeah, minorities, you know. And so, you know, we were trying to just kind of like excite the base. Um, and I think it was exciting because the nostalgia of first this black man who not only was a politician, but, you know, had that char charismatic vibe to him, but also he understood the culture. Like he listened to the Fugees, he listened to Jay-Z, he listened to, you know, um, Marvin Gaye. So it wasn't just a black it's politician relevant. who, He's right, who was, who, who, yeah, he, who didn't understand, who didn't have a pulse in the culture. Yeah, right. He had a pulse, right. you know what I mean? So it made him even sexier. You know, for us, for us and, yeah. and, and then also for, yeah. for the whole country right. because he had the duality of it. Right. Wow. And he won. So now let's talk about the current day here. I heard recently you had something happen to you where there were some charges brought against you that were related to that whole presidency yeah so so i mean i can't talk a lot about it but i would say this yeah the doj obviously um were pr are pressing well they pressed some charges against me which i'm confident that it's all going to get resolved and my innocence is going to be proven and my lawyer's dealing with it but it's you talk about high level political well why they they took it's it's called campaign financing number one and then number two they didn't charge me for this, but um, they froze $75 million of my money, you know. So, you know, I was doing some deals, international deals, and they felt like they wanted to check to see what was going on, you know, with the whole situation. That's as much as I can talk about. But basically, $75 million of my money is frozen, and then now they want to charge me for campaign financing. But my lawyer is handling it. I'm cool. It's what is campaign financing for those who don't know? That's for oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, let's go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're watching the Urban Music Report. 
Stay connected at urbanmusicreport.com for the hottest music features and videos, fashion reports, sports stories, entertainment news, and technology updates at urbanmusicreport.com. Stay connected. Welcome again. We have Proz here, and I'm not going to waste no time. We're going to continue where we left off. Now, tell me, for those who don't know, what is campaign financing, and how can one break a law against it? Well, <clears throat> campaign financing is supposed to. There's a bunch of different ways you can you can you can um, break campaign financing laws. Like, for example. There's one instance that you guys might be familiar with, the one with Donald Trump and his lawyer, when the lawyer supposedly paid hush money to uh, supposedly, allegedly, the woman that said she had a relationship with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So because they pay her hush money, that's campaign finance violation because they feel like had she come out, it could have influ influenced him winning or not. Right? Got you. Other ways of campaign financing is kind of like everybody has a limit on how much you can donate to a campaign. Oh, so you can't donate a, an unlimited amount? No, 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 campaign. no. So you can't do that. So like, for example, it, let's say the, the, the amount is a, a dollar. Mm -hmm. You can't donate five dollars. If you do, that's campaign f violation finance, oh. you know. So they're trying to accuse me of that, you know? Okay. And look, I was just trying to support my president, you know, right. trying to help him. By the way, it's, 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 what's interesting is, is that there's violations in other ways that they do it, but they write their own laws, right? Oh, of course. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, like a perfect example is like, you look at like big kind of like corporations on how they get away with things. Let's look at Flint, Michigan, for example, right? If that was Beverly Hills, they would have fixed that situation with the water instantly. Instantly. Right? So what happened is you got these big companies that dumping toxic chemicals in the water, and that's what's affecting the water up mm. there, right? But they kind of like go into this between this law, like, because laws is written by man, right? So it's all subjective. Right. So, you know, anyway, so I, it's basically I got caught up in this political mess, but it's cool. Like I said to you, my lawyers is handling it. So that's really basically what it is, you know. Okay. Yeah. So. But I'm so. good. But he's good. In the meantime, though, mm -hmm. you have a new project out, right? Elon Musk. It, tell me, how did you come up with the name? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know who Elon Musk is, right? Yeah, I Googled it. <laughs> Elon Musk is, is, is the CEO, founder of um, Tesla. So I'm, I'm in the tech business and I'm launching a new tech digital platform in the fall. And so Elon Musk is one of these guys, him and Steve Jobs are the two guys that I really respect. Mm -hmm. And so when I was working on this project, I decided like, I'm gonna name it Elon Musk. And the reason is, it's a couple reasons. First of all, I yeah. think it's a dope title. But number two is, I think as a black person going into the tech industry, I think that it's a way to also educate right. my listeners and new listeners and young listeners. Like, listen, there's more to us, mm -hmm. the culture that is, than making music, playing basketball, and making merchandise and clothes or whatever, right? right. There's more to us than just that. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can, we can like, like, like that movie, Hidden Figures, we can help bring the man into space. Right. It took four black women yes, it did. to help that man to get into space and come back safely, mm -hmm. right? right? But they don't talk about that, right? Just like, for example, it, 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 it took a black person to create the traffic light, for example, like things like that, right? right? So all we see when we see tech, we just see everyone else but us. Right. So then, so you got a generation who's thinking like, well, maybe this is not what I should be doing. Maybe I should be, try to be the next Jay-Z, which you're not gonna be the next Jay-Z. Cause they think, you know, they wanna be cool, they wanna be finished, they think that's the only. They think it's the only way, but, but, but that's, cause that's all they see. I mean, listen, I think, I'm gonna give you an example, the news that just came out a couple of weeks about Jay being the first black billionaire, right? 30 years ago, to say that 
we're going to make $10 million on our own clothing line. That was a milestone, like, whoa, can we ever get there? Yeah. Right? Right. Today, he just broke a ceiling. Like, I know I'm going to be a billionaire. Right. I'm going to be probably the first hip-hop, <laughs> well, the first hip-hop multi-billionaire. Okay. Okay? But the, point, but the point I'm saying is, is that it's no longer out of reach. It's more attainable. He just went to the moon, landed in the moon. Stuck the flag in. Stuck the flag in. And so now there's a lot of other people that's going to follow suit. Right, because now they they, they don't put the limit to themselves right. no more. It's the achievable. Right. So that's the whole point. There. So the whole point okay. is, is that, you know, you look at Rihanna, what she's accomplished. Incredible. Shout out to Riri. Shout out to Riri. You yeah. see what I'm saying, too? So the point I'm saying is Elon Musk is about saying that, yo, there's some great black minds out there that's in it that's doing innovation, that's in tech, that's that's want to invent something, create something. And so this is where I'm at. That's the feel I'm in. So I named my album Elon Musk Plus. Album is lit. It is lit. I listened to Chanel when when it leaked. I, I had I was fortunate enough to hear it. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna listen to Chanel and then we'll be right back. Told you we gotta go all the way eight, we gon' go eight. Swear I never tell nobody. Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. Swear I never tell nobody. Promise never talk about my Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. Swear I never tell nobody. I swear, I swear, I swear. I swear I never tell nobody. I swear I never talk about my hugging. Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. And that piece gobble cool. Show you what a dollar do. Let that pussy won't lie to you. Put that Korean barbecue. I could not no time to lose. Diamond can blind the moon. Up in some rendezvous. She thicker than Jamba Juice. But like Kim K. Hit it with the finger to Kim K. Fucking up the money like OJ. Give me super head when the rent land bitch that been paid. Sitting cold side with a theory. Hand back alert, a Mary. Bitch talk too much. Siri. Off white, Holly, Berry. Saving these souls every day. Uh, my dick should come with a K. Nah, French it all over the drapes. Versace the play tree, Pete in the rain. Run it. Stay connected at UrbanMusicReport.com for the hottest music features and videos, fashion reports, sports stories, entertainment news, and technology updates at UrbanMusicReport.com. Stay connected. Okay, we're back with Proz, of course, here still, because, you know, we're going all the way in here. We want to know what other tracks can we look forward to on Elon Musk? Well, I got some great artists on there. Um... I can't mention all of them right now, but I mentioned one more. My man Rick Ross, he's on there. But I got some other lit artists on there too. Oh, DJ Snake, got a record with him. Um, but these other two, these other three artists that's super lit, you gotta wait for that. Yeah, you gotta wait for it. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Plus, I'm going to address some of this issue that's going on with me right now. But it's just. Lit. I'm gonna put it into the lyrics and have people do their do their homework and listen to those lyrics to yeah. get the full you message. Bars, you yeah. gotta listen. We gotta bars. listen. Bars, in there. Yeah. bars. Wow. So we're in 2019. You're mm -hmm. still spitting bars. You're still doing amazing things. Tell me more about your tech life. Well, I mean, you have you have something coming out. Uh, is there? A, yeah, I'm um, launching a platform. I don't want to get too much into it, but I'll say this to you. It's coming out in the fall, and it's for the culture, and it's going to be monumental and revolutionary because it's just keep pushing us further into... Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is this. 20 years ago, like, I remember... You mentioned hip-hop. I remember when hip-hop... See, I could say that... Technically, I was part of the birth of hip hop. Like I remember the of first. Of course, time. you don't gotta tell me. No, but I'm saying, but a lot of people don't know, you know. So, so, cause you have a lot of people out there, you know, especially outside of the culture that love our culture and listen to hip hop and they embrace it, which is great, but they don't really understand they the history, really right? And I'm fortunate enough to be able to say, I remember, well, I remember when radio station played the first hip hop 
song ever, right? Like I was a part of that. I remember the first time it played, right? What was the song? It was a Run DMC record. Now, some people might argue Sugar Hill is the first hip hop record. I wouldn't say it is. To me, Run DMC is the first hip hop record, right? Just like Michael Jackson was the first black artist to get played on MTV, period. Mm -hmm. Right, the first black artist, okay? So I say this to say that I remember when hip-hop first came out, people were like, oh, that's a fad. It's not going to last, mm -hmm. right? But when you look at our culture and you look at the history of our culture from, now I'm not going to go too deep into it, but from slavery to segregation to whatever, right? We never got credit for our contribution, not just in this country, but in the world. Right. Right? Aristotle, Plato, they went to Africa to get philosophy from Africa and re-spit it. And people think they're these great philosophers, right? Which they are, but they always took from us. Right. We just never got credit for it. Yeah. Now, cut to, in this era, we're starting to get a little bit of just do. Corporation understand our influence. Now, I'm going to tell you a little something you probably don't know. For 75 years straight, the number one genre, sorry, 50 years straight, the number one genre of music, which means this genre sold the most music globally, not just in the country, mm -hmm. was rock and roll. That was the number one genre. Right. Uh-huh. Two years ago, it got dethroned by hip-hop. You're lying. Hip hop is now that. the number one genre globally for That's two years yeah. going sh consecutively now, right? Yeah. So for 50 years consecutively, it was rock and roll because the whole Beatles, Rolling Stones, all of that. It was rock and roll was the most sold. Hip hop just surpassed it. Everything about our culture influences pop culture, period. You understand what I'm saying yeah. to you? So right now we're getting, I just dude, yeah. and I feel like this is what everything that I'm doing is about. Because right. hip hop has given us, it has, it has blessed us with the opportunity to be able to, from our music and our creative, to venture out and do other things. things. I.e. Yeah. Jay being there, Riri Fenty, um, Kanye West Yeezy, Dr. Dre Beats, Puffy, Ciroc and, and, and Revolt and whatnot, right? So mm -hmm. this is a beautiful thing because you got to remember something. After the slaves were free in 1865 by Abraham Lincoln, we all were promised 40 acres and a mule. Right. You know what we all got? Nothing. So you know what God blessed us with? Hip-hop. Nice. That's a nice way to spin it. Feel me? It's true. Because where would we all be if it wasn't for hip hop? What would you be doing? What would you be doing? What would I be doing? Mm -mm. I'd be mad as hell, probably married with, with some badass kids, and like my life is horrible, you know? Not saying right. it's bad to have That's kids me. and be married. Being a slave to some kind but, of. But the point is. Not tapping into our creative. Right. Tap into our creative, man. This is. They took jazz from us. They took rock and roll from us. They took blues from us. This is the only thing that. They try. They they be coming in, sneaking in. They throw <laughs> they throw some some spies in here and there to kind of trying to infiltrate. Mm, say that again, infiltrate. Cultural vulturing, but y'all better know. They can't take this DNA from us. That's what I was thinking earlier. I no lie. I just say, you know what? I, I was I said I'm gonna take a picture today. I'm not lying because I think of uh, uh, of great captions all the time. My caption was gonna say be you because they can't be you they can't be you that's why they need you you need it regardless exactly exactly so that's you know so so it's a good and and you know what's great this is a great moment to be alive right now and to be creating like i tell people this all day you know like my class of generation hip-hop was great because it was like it was like it was just a, it was a different energy, mm -hmm. but this right here is like a different type of energy. What do you think about the hip hop culture now with the with the new artists now? Because I know you you mentioned all the 
icons or the legends from your era who are still very relevant and very popping. But what do you think about the younger ones that are coming into hip hop now? I think it's, I think there's some great some great artists out there. There's some great moments out there, and you got some trash. I mean, but that happened in my era too. Right, you had some true. great artists, and you had some. Listen, I mentioned you. The icons, but I can sit here and mention you some trash that came in that era too. And didn't last. And didn't last, right. you know what I mean? So I think, but obviously this is a different era because you have social media, things are moving quicker. I I would say from an entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. this is the best era. Really? Nice. What are you talking right. about? When I yeah. came out, you had you to go through a label to you get had on. had to go through. You couldn't be independent. Yo, this dude, Little Nas X, got a record for $30. For some kid in Europe that sampled Nine Inch Nails, and this dude got a number one record with Miley Cyrus' dad. Right. It's you true. couldn't. This could not happen in the '90s. It would have never happened. No, you're right. So what's? This is incredible. Yeah. You could just, I could just upload something on on Instagram or YouTube, and I'm I'm lit. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Like, that was not happening in the 90s. You had to go to a label, and then you had to figure out what producers producing your record, then what radio stations going to play. It, it was, it, I, honestly, when Do I think... Do you think the money was good in the 90s, or you think the money is better now? Probably now because of the independence, right? Is, yo, the, the, and everything. In the 90s, you had to be... Real quick, I'm going to tell you. Like, so when you look about, when you look at black artists... In the 80s, mm -hmm. you had to be a mega superstar to make money. That's Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Tina Turner, Billy Ocean. Not too many, right? <laughs> Whitney Houston. <laughs> like, yo, you can right. name it two hands. You couldn't be an unsigned independent right. artist. So then when hip-hop came in, you had to be so lit. Snoop Doggy Dog, Dr. Dre, Wu Tang Clan, Fuji's, um, Nas, Tupac. That's it. Eminem towards the end of the '90s. Yeah. Okay. You, I mean, you had artists who they were doing a little bit of living. I'm talking about like to be rich. Right. You had to sell tens and millions of records, which is come. Equivalent to now having like a billion stream, I would say, right? Okay. Today, yo, I just gave you an example, Little Nas X. Right. You know, you could have one verse and it go viral and you on fire. Right. That was never happening in my era. So if you tell me as far as like entrepreneurial wise, financial wise, the opportunity this. is endless now. <sighs> Alright, name me how many artists you know. The first hip hop being there was in the, in the 90s. No. <laughs> the first female worth over half a billion dollars from her clothing wasn't in the 90s. No. The first male to had headphones to be worth over three billion dollars wasn't in the 90s. It's all happening now. Right. <laughs> I'm saying to you. This now granted, era. you can't discount Back then, just like you can't discount the 80s, the hip hop artists oh, yeah. from the 80s, the yeah, Trailblazers, Era B, yeah. Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Queen Latifah, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, because they paved the way. Right. And they got, technically, they got the shorter end of the stick. Because be the honest. money wasn't as good. There was no money, you know, but, yeah, but, but, no but the artwork you was did it for, for the for, art. For the art. Right. You did it because you enjoyed it. You did it because that was. Right. That was what you had inside right. of you, and you had to let it out. But as, who, if they only knew then, how much money would be making? I mean, right think now. about this. Muhammad Ali's the icon, obviously, right? Right. But he didn't make the money Mayweather made, and right. he's more iconic than Mayweather. No disrespect to Mayweather, but then right. Mayweather will ever be. I don't care if Mayweather made forty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. What Muhammad accomplished. No boxer will ever go accomplish what he's done. Right now. Go try to go to jail for three years because you did not get enlisted in the army. And then come, and can't train while you're in jail. Come back out and defeat one of the most iconic heavyweight champion at the time, George Foreman. You can't do that today. Mm -mm. So I'm just saying. I don't, I don't mean to go on my Kanye rant, but I'm just saying. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, guys. Stay connected at UrbanMusicReport.com for the hottest music features and videos, fashion reports, sports stories, entertainment news, and technology updates at UrbanMusicReport.com. Stay connected. Welcome again. You're still watching Bar TV. This is the Urban Music Report Network. We have the Icon Press still here with us because I'm not letting him go yet. Uh -huh. um, tell us what is next for you. Oh man, you know, the best is still around the corner. Um, what's next for me is obviously um, new music, new artists coming out, you know, just trying to bring up and coming new artists, you know. Um, Can you name some new artists that you're working with to help or? Um, uh, rather not, just cause you know, artists are so f finicky, like one funny. minute you- I was gonna say, how, how is, how, what is your experience dealing with artists, whether it's from a management standpoint or mentoring or whatever you may be doing, but working with them? I really don't like it. I don't either. I don't like it, but, but my man, you know, my manager, he insists that I try to, you know, and there's a couple artists that I rock with that I happen to like, you know, so right. I'm just giving them an opportunity. But I personally don't like it because that, and see, this is where we have a generational difference. Talk about it. I come from a generation where, like, yo, you want something, you go work. It, I don't care if I got to sleep on a couch. I don't care if I got to pull donkeys on my back. I don't care if I got to walk from here to, the, to Africa, hot sun, drinking piss. Like, yo, camel milk don't matter. Like, yo, I'm going to go get it. Right. This generation is like... Nah. <laughs> Lost in the... Yo, I'm like, technology. yo, oh, you know, so that's, so that's where I feel like there's a gap, right? Mm. And so, and that's why I have an issue with certain artists, because it's kind of like, they just feel like they don't have to do certain things. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, yo, you got to do, you do what you have to, to do what you want to. Right. That's my philosophy. Right, I love right? that philosophy. So anyway, so I got that going on. But more importantly, also, I got my new endeavors, which is, I told you, my, my digital platform. What's the name of it? Or you rather not? Yeah. yeah. But what I would say is this. I'm all about giving back to the culture. Okay. That's my whole, my whole mission in life. That's my calling. I feel like, I feel like we have been taken advantage of, which is cool. Right. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to point figures, this man, this other man. No, I'm going to do something about it. Right. Right. So if there's a problem, then do something about it. Right. I hate people just keep complaining. I always say, just do it, right? Just do it. They, so that's so what many I'm doing. people support Nike and buy Nike all the way, but they don't. If you even have a problem, go create your own Nike. Like, you say, I say one thing to you, right? Like, like what Kanye did, he wouldn't create easy. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't like the way they were re representing the culture, so he went and did something about it. Great so job. this, right? So that's the same thing I'm doing. So that's what I'm doing, giving back, trying to help to create micro entrepreneurs and micro financing, get us really lit. And at the same time, knowledgeable, right? Mm. Because the culture, we get excited about all the flashiness, but we don't understand the financial engine behind it. Right. And that's where we get stuck at. And I'm trying to help change that. And that's what my mission. But at the same time, have fun dropping this Elon Musk. Right. Elon Musk going to be when is When is it coming out exactly? Um, end of summer, beginning of fall. End of summer, beginning of fall. You're going to hear about it. It's going to oh, be we crazy. we better get it. No, you're definitely going to get it. We better get it for the Urban Music Report no, no, Network. Course, That's where we're we putting it out there. Because they're going to start, they're going to watch this interview, and they're going to be now, by the time this airs, they'll be looking forward to Elon Musk. But Chanel is available, and it is in rotation on the Urban Music Report Network. Yep. So, anything else we haven't covered? I appreciate you having me here. You know, me sitting here talking that shit. You know what I mean? Talk that truth. You know, that's what I do. So I want to thank everybody here. I want to thank the audience. You thank know. you guys for tuning in. And just want to thank everybody who contributed to the culture. Yeah. Not steal from the culture and profit from the culture and don't give back to the culture. There you go. The ones that contributed to the culture. Right. Yeah. 
Well, thank you and much blessings to you on all your endeavors coming up. Thank and you. when you do launch that platform, make sure you let us know. Oh, I would you know, love to. The planet going to know. I will love to sit down with you again yes. after that so Most we can definitely. go into everything you couldn't discuss right. freely. Oh, no. We, yeah, yeah. I want to. I want yes. to because it's going to be a different a different vibe. Because it's right. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. That's a wrap. Grinding, grinding, grinding. I keep grinding. Climbing, climbing, climbing.